we were discussing hierarchy of convergence right. So, we were talking about various notions of convergence and which of these notions imply the other and so on hierarchy of convergence concepts. So, the main result we had was that almost sure convergence and rth mean convergence they both imply convergence in probability right and convergence in probability implies convergence in distribution. So, generally none of these none of the opposite implications are true in general ok, none of the reverse arrows hold generally speaking. However, if you have so, in this for this reverse arrow for example, it does not hold generally, but if your limit is a constant then convergence in, in distribution implies convergence in probability ok. So, if the limit is a constant x is a constant then these two notions are equivalent ok. Then we also proved this bit. So, we are done with that bit, we are done with that bit ok. Uh, did we give a counter example to this? Uh, so, okay. so, you can construct a counter example to this, it is actually fairly trivial, we will do it uh, and then we constructed a, so this proof we have done. So, almost sure implies convergence in probability we will do today, so it is a non trivial proof ok and the reverse arrow is not true also we have given a counter example ok. So, I have to give you a counter example for this, for th this I gave you and for between these two I have to give you a counter example right neither in neither way is the implication true right. So, uh, so the where we left off last time was if you consider, so you consider the example where x n is equal to 1 with probability 1 over n 0 with probability 1 minus 1 over n we showed that x n converges to 0 in probability, but uh, x n does not converge to 0 almost surely right. So, here x n are independent So, this is the counter example we gave right to show that convergence probability uh, does not apply convergence almost surely. We used in fact Borel Cantilly lemma 2 to assert that uh, it is not true that beyond a point. So, even no, no matter how far out you go with there will be some x n which is equal to 1 right which means x n does not go to 0. Is that argument clear? So, this Borel Cantilly lemma also gives us a sufficient condition to check for convergence almost surely ok. So, if you if you think about convergence almost surely it is conceptually easy enough. So, you, it just says that you go look for all omegas where this convergence happens. If the set of omegas where this convergence happens has probability 1 you have you are fine right then converges almost surely, but this is not a very practical definition right. You have to go and hunt for all right you have to see which or where 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 does the convergence happen where does the convergence not happen and look for its probability right. It is not a very practical way of uh, practical way of ascertaining whether the convergence almost surely occurs or not. So, what we will do is today we will uh, derive first we will derive a simple sufficient condition for convergence almost surely and we will we will derive a necessary and sufficient condition for convergence almost surely ok. So, sufficient condition for checking whether x n converges to x almost surely if for all epsilon z greater than 0 sum over n equals 1 to infinity probability
then x n tends to x solve machine. Okay. So, this is a easy condition to check. So, if you notice this, so if you notice just that object, it looks like uh, it looks like so this is what this term. If you prove that this term goes to zero, then it is convergence in probability, right? So, if this term goes to zero, you have convergence in probability for every epsilon greater than zero. This condition is a little bit stronger. It says a little bit more. Okay, as n tends to infinity, not only does this term go to zero for every epsilon, it goes to zero fast enough that the sum converges to some finite value. Is that clear? For example, if this if this probability were to go to zero as one over n, you will have convergence in probability. But 1 over n doesn't sum to any finite value right is infinite so if it goes to if this term goes to zero not just goes to zero as n tends to infinity but goes to zero fast enough to keep the summation finite then you have convergence almost surely is that clear so this is a very easy way to check for convergence almost surely but this is only a sufficient condition okay this is only a sufficient condition if this holds you are guaranteed almost sure convergence but even if it does not hold sometimes you may have almost your convergence. Okay. So, it works only in one direction. So, how do you prove this? So, it is a fairly easy proof. Hmm? Ah, right. So, you have to use Borel cantilever lemma. If you see a summation like that, you have to use Borel cantilever lemma. Right. So, you call that event, let us call this event a n of epsilon. Okay. A n of epsilon is the event that the absolute value of x n minus x exceeds epsilon okay. by Borel cantilever lemma 1 only finitely often does a n of epsilon occur for any epsilon correct. So, by Borel cantilever lemma 1 we see that for any epsilon greater than 0. A n of epsilon occurs only finitely many. So, only so what I want to say is for any epsilon greater than 0, only finitely many A n of epsilon occur with probability 1. Right, you agree with that? So, I have sum over n equal to 1 to infinity, probability of a n is finite. So, only finitely many a n's will occur by Borel cantilever lemma, and this is true for any epsilon greater than 0. Why? Because that is what my if, if for all epsilon greater than 0, I have this condition. So, for all epsilon greater than 0, only finitely many a n's of epsilons occur. So, what does that mean? It means that for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists some n naught beyond which none of the correct right. So, which means beyond n that n naught absolute value of x n minus x is less than epsilon. So, x n has converged to x and that is with probability 1 correct. You see the proof. So, this Borel cantilever lemma is very powerful sometimes in proving this almost sure convergence. Okay. Thus, Uh, for any epsilon greater than 0, uh, 
the difference the difference x absolute value of x and y is x uh, so what i want to me so i am not i am saying this in sent in a sentence the difference uh, remains less than epsilon for all large enough n right <coughs> so what i am saying is so there are all these xns right so this is um, let me just consider xn minus x as my what i am plotting right so and if this is my i am considering this band of width this is epsilon okay this width is epsilon what i am saying is there will only be so this so if i am plotting uh, plotting here the difference x n minus x right so there may be so there may be some excursions right as n goes but what happens is there must there must be some n, n beyond which it stays within it forever stays within this epsilon band right never exceeds this epsilon band and this is true for every epsilon greater than 0 which means almost surely x n converges to x you see this picture so this is the difference so that can jump around so you, this is your epsilon band you fix any epsilon you want 0 0.0001 and then it keeps jumping around but, but Borel cantilema says for with probability 1 there exists an n beyond which these excursions never occur because only finitely many excursions occur outside epsilon only finitely many excursions outside epsilon occur so this sequence is doomed to stay within this epsilon band forever no matter how small you take your epsilon eventually it will get in and never get out which means almost surely convergence has occurred right but this is only a sufficient condition okay fine so it is so i leave it as an exercise to you to to figure out a situation where convergence almost surely happens but this situation is violated this condition is violated so if this condition is violated you are guaranteed almost sure convergence but you may have almost sure convergence without this condition holding you see what i mean okay you create such an example actually you already know that example okay you just have to recall it okay uh, what i'm trying to say is try to break the converse of this theorem converse doesn't hold okay great so that's a very simple sufficient condition to check for okay in a similar spirit next i'm going to uh, do uh, as necessary and sufficient condition for convergence okay it will essentially exploit this picture okay necessary and sufficient condition for almost sure convergence so okay before i move to this i want to make sure you have understood this sufficient condition because the necessary sufficient condition is a little more involved if you do not understand this you will have a hard time with what I am going to say. Any questions? Okay, theorem. let so 
I am going to call the same an of epsilon is the event that this excursion happens right. So, the same as this ok, let a and b that event and b m of epsilon is equal to union n greater than or equal to m a n of epsilon. Then x n tends to x almost surely, x n converges to x almost surely if and only if probability of b m of epsilon goes to 0 as m goes to infinity. So, this is a necessary and sufficient condition ok. So, whenever something is necessary and sufficient it is like equivalent statement right x n tending to x almost surely is equivalent to saying that my b m of epsilon has a probability that is going to 0 ok. See note that a n of epsilon probability of a n of epsilon going to 0 is convergence in probability correct. Now, I am saying a little more I am saying a little something is. So, I will help you interpret this also oh, there is one mistake I made I think pre b m of epsilon tends to 0 as m, as m tends to infinity for all epsilon greater than 0 ok. This is true for every epsilon ok. okay. So, now I will help you with the statement. So, a n of epsilon is clear a n of epsilon is the event that there is a there is at least an epsilon excursion of this difference at the nth value correct. The, this is the nth term of the sequence. So, this difference exceeding epsilon means a n occurs a n of epsilon occurs. Now, what is b m of epsilon? It is the union n greater than or equal to m a n of epsilon. So, can you explain in words what b m epsilon means? You fix an epsilon no problem then what is b m of epsilon? Sorry. So, this is union over n greater than or equal to m. So, you are unioning over m m plus 1 m plus 2 and so on right. So, in words then b m of epsilon is the event that at least one excursion happens after m uh, m or after right correct. So, a n of epsilon is the event that at n. So, if you are looking at a particular n right. So, this is the n axis if you look at figure right. So, you are looking at the event that this difference has exceeded epsilon right x n minus x has exceeded epsilon that is your. So, a n epsilon just looks at n whereas b m of epsilon says you fix an m fix an epsilon and then you say b m occurs if if there is even one excursion m or after is that clear ok. This just means there exists an n greater than or equal to m for which the excursion happens the greater than epsilon excursion happens ok. Any questions on this? This is very crucial. Everybody with me? Okay. So, what this theorem says is if the probability of this event goes to 0, then you have almost sure convergence. So, if the probability of the event that so x n tends to x almost surely if if and only if beyond m no epsilon excursions ever occur. Okay. 
if you find some m right this m can be very large, but if you find some m beyond which no epsilon excursions ever occur after that m then you have almost sure convergence and vice versa okay it is an if and only if condition it is not a sufficient condition it is a necessary and sufficient condition okay any questions will you repeat anything Yes, no, no, no. That was the sufficient condition. So, a n of epsilon. So, if, so you understand what this figure is. I am plotting. So, this this curve is the this whatever I've drawn here is the difference x n minus x. I am plotting it versus n, right? And I am saying that okay. Let's say this is my n. If the difference between if this difference x n minus x exceeds my epsilon band, then I say so, this is actually not absolute value of x n minus x then right it is only x n minus x right ok fine. Uh, so, if this difference exceeds epsilon I say a n occurs a n epsilon occurs ok. Now, we know that if see a n epsilon probability of that going to 0 is convergence and probability right that is clear to everyone, but convergence almost surely needs a little more it on not only needs that the probability of a n of epsilon goes to 0, a n of epsilon is the event that there is the at n there is an excursion right, but we are saying that b m of epsilon has to have probability going to 0. Now, this b m of epsilon is the event that there exists an m there exists some there exists some m beyond which no excursions occur. Okay, so, BM, BM of epsilon is the event that there exists. Uh, so, BM of epsilon is the event that there exists an epsilon incursion uh, excursion m m plus 1 beyond m correct. If the probability of an excursion at m or beyond if that probability goes to 0 you have almost your convergence and vice versa Okay, it is a necessary and sufficient condition. Hmm. There will not be any occurrence for a n. So, this m will be related to that n naught, right? Yes, yes, that is what we are saying. Okay, so, from here, sufficient condition is going back there. Ha, sufficient condition, see, sufficient condition, uh, yeah. So, this essentially tells me that there are only beyond some, so beyond some a, m, there are no more incursions. That is what, uh, so there are no more excursions, what this, this guy says, right. Now, I am saying this is a little more strong. Before n naught, hmm. this put some constraint. Before no 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 uh, see this is a sufficient condition this is a necessary and sufficient condition okay so this this will be a this will say more than that okay before n not before by by V C lemma hmm? beyond n not it doesn't occur before, before, uh, yeah after some so be, this results hold this result holds because by Borel cantilever lemma there exists some m beyond which there are no further excursions. Right, therefore, it converges. Here, what we are saying is, it's necessary and sufficient that B M of epsilon has the probability tending to zero. Okay. Probability of B M of epsilon is same as the first one with n equal to m to infinity and equal to zero. Does that infinity? No, it's not. So I will prove this. I will say this is probably the I mean so this is probably the uh, most uh, challenging or demanding proof you will have to understand ok. I mean there are harder theorems than this which we will not prove ok, but I think you should understand this much under the convergence almost surely you should really appreciate what is going on which is why I am doing this proof ok. Proof. So, I will prove the direction. So, I have to prove that uh, one direction right. So, if uh, limit m tending to
okay so this is one direction other direction is the, the i should say that if x and tends to x almost surely i have to prove this happens so first i will prove this direction okay let a of epsilon equal to integral sorry uh, intersection m equal to 1 to infinity union n equals m to infinity a n epsilon. So, this is a so this is a familiar object right this is the event that so this is what is this event. So, this is nothing but this is the event that a n infinitely occurs infinitely often correct this is an old 4 we have encountered this in Borel cantilever lemma proof, proof right ok great. So, now I am going to say so what have I assumed I have assumed this limit is 0 is it not. you know what I am actually trying so sorry I am actually the what I am trying to prove is actually the converse I am sorry. So, I am proving that if sorry so I started the wrong proof. So, if uh, x n converges to x almost surely then ok I will prove this first ok. So, if x n converges to x almost surely then clearly probability of a epsilon equal to 0 for all epsilon greater than 0. Let us see if you agree with that ok. So, I am assuming that x n converges to x almost surely. Okay. So, but if x n converges to x almost surely then I am saying that for any epsilon I must have only finitely many excursions. So, I must have only finitely many epsilon excursions because you, are, you have convergence almost surely. So, at some point you should be always within that epsilon band only then you can you say the probability one you have to be within that epsilon band right. So, which means you have to have only finitely many excursions because if this is not true then you will not have convergence with probability 1 correct. So, we have thus probability the probability intersection m equals 1 through infinity. Now, you look at that what is this guy what is inside this box is b m epsilon right that is what I have defined it correct will agree with that right I have simply rewritten this bit. Now, I can do something right now I can so I do have so these b m epsilons are nested now you have to tell me whether it is nested decreasing or nest they are nested decreasing right b m epsilons are nested decreasing they are Russian dolls you see why because b m epsilon is the event that there exists some ex epsilon excursion m or beyond ok. So, if you if you, so if you have some excursion m plus 1 or beyond you are guaranteed to have an excursion m and beyond. So, b m s are nested decreasing they are Russian dolls which means I can invoke continuity of probability measures ok. 
by continuity of probability measures, we have limit m tending to infinity, m tending to infinity uh, probability of correct. So, one way I am done. Okay. So, I have proven this statement then, right. Now, I have to prove the converse, okay. It is a little bit more tricky. Uh, yeah, I have to think about it differently, it is not necessarily more tricky. So, the converse I have to prove that is limit m tending to infinity. then x n converges to x almost sure. So, I mean if, if so this is all for epsilon for all epsilon greater than 0 right. Everywhere it is for all epsilon greater than 0. Now, see the key to this proof everywhere is that see throughout. So, it is actually this is not just if then it is actually equivalent ok may be I should. So, this condition that I have said right x n converges to x almost surely is equivalent to saying that there are only finitely many excursions correct right for any epsilon greater than 0 that is what I am going to use right. So, more formally let C be the event that x n of omega approaches x of omega. Okay, I want to prove that probability of c equal to 1 when this is satisfied right. So, I have I can use what I will prove is that probability of c complement is 0. So, let me just keep this figure. <coughs> So, I am going to prove that probability of C complement is 0. So, so what does C complement mean? C complement means that x n does not converge to x okay, which means that no matter how big an n you look at there is some excursion right. So, that is what we will use ok probability of so I will write it like this. So, C complement is the in, is the event that there is no convergence convergence does not happen which means there must be some epsilon for which A of epsilon occurs. Now, what is A of epsilon? Ah, there are infinitely many excursions right. So, if convergence does not happen see convergence is the same as saying beyond some n you are within that epsilon band for any epsilon correct. If you do not have convergence then for some epsilon you have infinitely many excursions correct. So, which means there exists some epsilon for which. So, you can write it like this. So, C complement is the same as saying there exists epsilon for which there are infinitely many epsilon excursions agreed. So, A of epsilon is the event that there are infinitely many epsilon incursions excursions. So, now so there exists some epsilon greater than 0 for which there are infinitely many epsilon excursions ok.
So, now little this is a little bit of a problem. So, we have never encountered a situation where you have a uncountable union, this is an uncountable union right. So, what you do is you convert it into a countable union. So, this is a standard trick in measure theory probability 3 and so on. So, you you say union over m, m equals 1 through infinity a of 1 over m. You see why these two are the same because if for if for some epsilon which is not of the form 1 over m let us say there is an there is an excursion for. So, let us say this occurs for some epsilon greater than 0 that epsilon need not be of the form 1 over n, but you can always find a large enough n for which 1 over n is smaller than that epsilon correct. So, if you have infinitely many excursions for epsilon equal to 0, 0 0.0028 or something you can always find an integer let us say z, z, m such that 1 over m is less than 0 0.0028. In particular I can take m equal to 1 over 0 0.002 right something like that. So, you can always do that going from an uncountable union to a countable union is not a problem. Fine, right. So, let us say epsilon is suppose you have an excursion, suppose you know that a epsilon there are infinitely many excursions for epsilon equal to you give me a number. Huh? So, let us say it is like 1 over uh, some big number, right. Let us say it occurs for 1 over 10,000 pi just for the sake of it, okay. For epsilon equal to 1 over 10,000 pi, you know you have a excursion. Right, so you can always take so how 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 is this? This is like three thousand something, right? So you take m equals four thousand, no? Right, so you have infinitely many excursions for that epsilon. So you'll definitely have infinitely many excursions for epsilon equal to one over four thousand. Correct. So there is no loss of generality in doing that. Right, this is something I want you to appreciate. So now it's easy, right? Now you know how to deal with this stuff right. So, this I can use union bound correct. Okay. So, I have to prove that probability of so if so I have the summation of the probability that there are so, so there are all these terms right I want to prove that each of these terms is 0 probability of each of these terms I want to prove is 0 ok. How does that follow? It follows from so it follows from here right I have assumed that So, probability of a epsilon is equal to limit m tending to infinity of this guy right. So, I want to show want to show uh, each term here is 0. Okay. as long as this is equal to 0. So, I think I am using the same m that is causing a little bit of confusion let me see it ok. So, I may maybe I should put a k here instead of m ok. Let us see now I want to look at probability of a of consider probability a of 1 over k ok. This is equal to 
the probability that intersection m equals 1 through infinity. So, yeah, throughout you just write k, okay, just for just so that we do not mix up with our b m, the m there, okay, just, just, just write k here, let us just write k, okay, all this is k, this is also k, okay. This is equal to uh, u. Agreed? See, probability of a of epsilon is nothing but the probability that uh, it's the see probability of see a of one over k is the probability that there are infinitely many one over k excursions, which I am writing like that. Agreed? So, this is equal to by continuity of probability this will be equal to limit m tending to infinity probability of b m of 1 over k okay. and this is equal to what? Why is this 0? because that is what I assumed correct. So, this is equal to 0 by assumption correct. Thus, probability of a of 1 over k is 0 for all k greater than or equal to 1 correct. So, this summation will be equal to 0. So, if you are summing an infinite number of zeros, you get you get a 0, okay. let there be no confusion about it. Right? Some k equal to 1 to infinity 0 is 0, right? there is no confusion about that, right? which means probability of c complement is 0, therefore, probability of c is 1. Okay? So, is that clear? So, go over this theorem properly. Okay. This really this proof of this theorem really uh, really brings out the qualitative nature of this almost sure convergence. Okay. So, what this theorem is saying is almost sure convergence is equivalent to saying that there exists some m beyond which there are no more epsilon excursions for any epsilon greater than 0 all your epsilon excursions end at some point and after that your sequence is constrained to lying within that epsilon band. Okay. I have used continuity of probability right. As in the first proof. As in the first proof. Huh, so, you are saying that you can just retrace your uh, initial proof. So, the only step involved there is that you have to go from here to here, that is exactly what I have done actually. Right. So, you have to go from an epsilon to some countable index that you have to reason. After that, that is exactly what I have done. Okay. Then this union bound, union bound also helps. Okay. Okay. So therein lies the qualitative difference between convergence in probability and convergence almost surely. Okay. Convergence in just probable convergence in probability just says that a n of epsilon probability goes to zero. So convergence in probability always looks at just one n forget about the rest of the sequence okay only you will look at a particular n okay and sees what is the probability of an excursion okay look at fix an n look at the probability of an epsilon excursion and if the probability of the epsilon excursion goes to zero then you have convergence in probability for convergence almost surely 
you are not looking for a particular n what you are doing is you fix a particular m and you are saying that beyond m there are no further excursions is that clear yes with me so you see even in the 1 over n example we did right xn equal to 1 with probability 1 over n see the probability of xn exceeding epsilon may namely xn being equal to 1 has very small probability 1 over n but if you look at after m there will be some excursions right with probability 1 so you don't have almost your convergence correct now are you able to convince yourself that convergence almost surely implies convergence prob in probability so this theorem is, is this hammers everything right it proves that uh, so that simple implication of almost sure convergence implying convergence probability is a trivial consequence of what we have proved right so we have proven much more you see why because our theorem necessary and sufficient condition theorem says beyond m there are no further epsilon excursions which means at m there cannot be for any the probability of excursion is going to zero you have therefore convergence in probability so that is fairly easy so corollary xn converges to x almost surely implies xn converges to x in probability okay so this is because see xn so xn converges to x almost surely is equivalent to saying that limit m tending to infinity uh, probability of bm epsilon equal to 0 right but so bm epsilon is contained in am epsilon you see why see bm epsilon means m and beyond there are there is an excursion or i think it's the other way is it ha so maybe i messed it up uh, uh, bm epsilon means there exists an excursion right so so bm epsilon says there exists an excursion m and beyond okay am epsilon means there exists an excursion at m right so i wrote this is incorrect so i should really write ha so i should really write that correct agreed so thus so this implies limit m tending to infinity probability of m epsilon equals 0 why so bm is a bigger event right that has probability going to 0 so you have convergence in probability of course the converse we know is not true right we may have this probability going to 0 but you may have some excursion popping off for right so you may we saw the situation where this probability goes to 0 but this probability does not go to 0 the 1 over n example we gave right but this direction easily follows okay so this result is a trivial consequence of the necessary and sufficient condition theorem we proved okay so i will stop here